Minecrafters out there, my name is Fabe and welcome back to another episode in the Dinosaur Mine. And I've been pretty busy lately for the last couple of days and weekends, which is why I wasn't really busy in here, I gotta admit. So I don't think I have done a lot of work in here, if at all, after the last episode. But uh, that doesn't matter, just means that we can do a lot of work together today. And today we're actually going to start working, as I, as I told you last episode, we're going to start working on the basement of the laboratory. And I'm looking forward to that because that that's, that's, should be interesting. Before we go to work though, let's quickly check on our dinosaurs. We're getting more and more. We already have three dinosaurs now that we have to take care of. And you are doing pretty good. Hunger is still pretty good. 12 days. I don't think you, you grow anymore, do you? You're, you're a big guy already, huh? You don't grow anymore. Full health. Nothing to complain. You want to take a swim? Maybe, maybe. Take a little swim. Can I push you out? Yes. Nice, isn't it? Nice, refreshing water. Enjoy it. Yeah, go for a swim. Take a look around your enclosure. <laughs> All right, let's check on our very, very, very small Mosasaurus. Maybe he has grown a bit. Maybe he'll still bite us to pieces. There he is, all the way back there. Uh, I don't need to go at any closer. He's still here and he's hopefully still growing. Maybe he'll be a little bit bigger at the end of the episode. As I just said, I haven't played in this world too much since I last recorded in here. Um, I don't think we have to check on, on Shade. I think we checked on Shade at the end of last episode. So that's not necessary, so we can can go to work already. I had uh, one suggestion uh, that I had for the basement is having a, a petting zoo down there with uh, small animals. And no, I don't think a petting zoo has something to do in the, in the laboratory. Because this laboratory is only for me and no visitors are allowed in here. That's just for dinosaur creation and breeding. And the visitors are only allowed on these official paths down there. Maybe I should even put some sort of a control station so only personnel can get in here. <laughs> Maybe I should build something like that. Um, I might build a padding zoo somewhere else sooner or later, but definitely not in our laboratory where all our expensive research equipment and all the very, very sensitive... Um, DNA and uh, the eggs. We can't let anyone in here. That's not how it works. Um, I measured it out. I think it's like 18. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That should work. And then we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this wall here. And I think, I hope I won't, I won't um build or oh, we won't make a hole into the into the island i hope we won't won't have a hole to the outside here soon anyways um today i think it's time to talk about a little more sciencey stuff isn't it <laughs> well at least I, i'll try it just a little bit um i i figured you guys enjoyed that so why not continuing it and uh, i have a little topic that came up today actually i was at uni and someone mentioned that um, researchers managed to erase and to um, re, re recycle, I guess, re-establish um, certain memories in in animals. And this is something very interesting, in my opinion. Did I want to make a shovel? I don't even know. Probably. Um, I'm gonna need one, anyways. Um, I watched a TV show called The Dollhouse recently by Joss Whedon. Very, very, very good TV show. But um, it basically, the, the, the story is based on the fact that they have techn technology. So it, the story is based in the not too distant future. Um, have to think really, really quick about which direction I want to go here. I think I want to have it like like four quadrants. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yeah, it's a perfect square, so this is perfect. So I'm probably gonna um, build a walkway in kind of a cross shape, and then we have four different kind of crops that we gonna plant down here. I think it's gonna look good. All right, let's get to work. Um, so the the story of Dollhouse plays in the not too distant future. Maybe I don't know five to ten years in the future. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but they have the technology to basically erase the complete memory of a person and replace it by the memories of another person. So they can basically um, swap everything out and you are going to become a whole new person if you are um, subject to this technology. Which is a pretty interesting concept, but um, up till now I thought, no, that's, that's never going to happen. Something like that could never be real. It's all fiction. There's not a tiny bit of truth um, um, with that. But, uh, yeah, and I can also tell you the reason. Because the way how memories work is... So, on a computer you have your circuits on the, on the circuit board. And if you, have, you can have several models of the computer and the circuits are always the same. They have the same shape. They are connected in the same way. And that is... That makes it possible that you can save different stuff on the same circuit boards. That is how a computer works. The human brain, or not even just the human, the, the brains in general of all the animals, um, works different. So the connections between the neurons, which are basically the nerve cells we talked about last time, when we talked about the muscles too, um, that are in your brain are also connected to each other, but Every single brain has different connections, so it's not like a circuit board where everything is always the same and you basically use it like a hard drive and you can just um, store certain... Is it silk touch? Did I do that on purpose? I'm not even sure. Um, so you cannot just store it like on the hard drive, a different information in the same kind of format. If you want to store stuff in the brain, you basically form connections between neurons. That's how memories work. Um, it's not the, the state of the neurons of the nerve cells themselves. It's more the connection between the nerve cells that gets established uh, while you're growing up, basically. So that is a total different process. And there's no way that you can easily uh, predict how you have to connect neurons to get certain memories and certain experiences into a brain. This is the, this is the biggest problem and that is why I, I always thought that it will never be possible to manipulate the memories in a brain. However, there has been uh, some advances in this field. Um, by said researchers. They experimented around with rats, I think it was. And I read the, the, the published article in Nature again. Thanks to my university, I have actually access to the original published papers, which of course helps me with stuff like that. Do I don't have any more stone? Maybe in the furnaces somewhere? Gold, I don't need gold right now. I need some smooth stone. There, we got some. That should work. We should probably refill it too. Let's quickly sleep too. Um, I know we are working on the inside, but you never know when a creeper or something else sneaks their way into our laboratory. So let's sleep the night away and be much safer. And then we are gonna refill the furnaces. Yes, that's what we're gonna do. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, they, so they experimented with rats and they were able to manipulate a certain memory in in rats, which is pretty pretty interesting if you ask me. So what they did is they um, conditioned, and that might sound a little gruesome maybe, but they conditioned rats to actually... Um, Every time they give him a signal, they receive pain. So they conditioned um, the rats to to um, expect pain whenever they receive this uh, signal. And the signal is a kind of interesting itself already. Um, so what they did, they inserted a certain protein into their neurons and nerve cells, which produces pro yeah. 
Well, a gene that produces proteins um, that is sensitive to light pulses. And I'm not exactly sure how um, the protein reacts to light pulses, but they were able um, to basically make the nerve cells react by giving light pulses uh, into the brains of the rats, which sounds a little bit cruel, but um, that, is, that is how science works nowadays. Um, if we want to know more about how a brain works and how the nerve cells work to maybe fight um, diseases they have to do with um, neurodegeneration like Alzheimer's disease, for example, we need to know more, more about that stuff. And hence, we need to perform such experiments. But yeah, they were able to condition the, the rats, so whenever they receive the signal in their brain, the light pulses, um, they, they, they expected to receive pain. And they have a certain type of light pulse, which basically strengthens the, the connections between the synapses, between the different um, neurons, which which kind of um, enhances the response they get from the rats. Um, so at first they gave them life pulses at the same time as I think it was an electrical shock. Um, so they, they kind of associate this light pulse they get in their brain with the pain they get from the shock. And then they just um, received the light pulse and they, the researchers... Sorry about that, I hate software updates so much. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, they um, basically received a fear reaction from the rats just by putting the, the light pulse without the electrical shock in there. Which um, basically shows that the certain, the certain neurons that they um, basically attach the, the light pulse to or the glass fiber cable for the light pulse to um, are responsible for this kind of reaction. Um, but then, even more interesting, they changed the light pulse to a lot lower um, frequency pulse and they were able to apply that pulse for a certain amount of time and after that the light pulse, the normal light pulse, wasn't able to induce the fear reaction into the rats anymore. Which basically shows that they totally forgot the whole conditioning process. So this other type of light pulses is suspected to actually weaken the connection between the neurons. And yeah, hence um, the connection between the neurons gets lost and, and the memory gets lost. Which is really, really an interesting concept that I didn't thought would be possible. But even more um, incredible is that when they use the other type of light pulse uh, for a certain amount of time again, they strengthened the connection again and basically restored the memory. So after that, the the light pulse is actually uh, induced another fear reaction again, which is which is crazy. So they were able to erase the the memory and they were able to restore the memory with two different kind of um, light pulses for that. And yeah, that's basically how they were able to manipulate a certain type of of memory, um, at least in rats. Ah, uh, excuse me once again. I have a, I have an, an allergy against uh, pollen, which are going around this time of year again, and that makes my nose itchy all the time and my eyes itchy all the time. So I'm having kind of a hard time recording here, but I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> But yeah, very, very interesting um, stuff and um, to show that it is not only possible with the, um, with the light pulse triggering of the reaction, they also had another, another group of rats where they did the same thing with um, a tone. So whenever the, the rats heard a tone, they received the electrical shock. And even with that, they were able to... Um, use these certain type of light pulses again to induce the or to to delete the memory and restore the memory not to the same extent but um, to to a noticeable amount and that is pretty crazy obviously in rats everything is a little uh, different a little well um, a little bit better um, researched when it comes to the brain because the human brain is way more complex obviously otherwise we wouldn't be able to reflect on that even um, 
But yeah, so they, they did that in a certain part of the brain which is known to be responsible for fear reactions already. So they kind of had an advantage with that. But yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting step that I didn't think would be possible. And who knows what else will come in the future. Obviously not in the next 5 to 10 years like it was possible in, the, in Dollhouse, the, the TV show I watched. But maybe we'll so will someday something something similar will be possible to a lesser degree at least in animals, and maybe it could even be used one day to or at least the strengthening of the synapses and the neurons effect could be used to um, help out with some of these neurodegeneration illnesses and diseases. Could be interesting. But as usually, this is just uh, those are just first experiments that were kind of successful, but no one really knows exactly how that works still. So there's a huge way ahead of these researchers until they can actually get use of these of this uh, knowledge. But yeah, I thought I might share this since I thought it was very very interesting and kind of related to a TV show I watched uh, lately. Um, but I think I'm gonna work a little bit off camera down here now so we can get actually something done and uh, I'm gonna bring you guys back in once I have some progress made. I think I want to have at least sugarcane and cactus in here and probably melons and I'm not sure what the fourth one will be. I don't want to have um, pumpkins because I really don't need pumpkins. I'm not even sure if I need melons that much. What else could I do? Let me quickly take a look in the in my greenery chest. Let's see. Flowers, not really. So sugarcane. I could possibly do wheat or, or potatoes for, for food. Hmm, I might do that. I might do potatoes actually. I think potatoes would be a nice food source to have. Alright, I'll see you in a bit guys. So, I might have a serious problem here. I dug down the floor and then I just fell and the first thing I did when I fell, I pressed escape. And then I died. Oh my god! Let's sleep real quick. But I didn't know I had this huge cave right below my laboratory. It's crazy, let's see. Still some, yeah, still a little bit in there. Um, um, sword. Pickaxe, very important things. Mm, just a little bit of food and I would really like some torch. The problem is I'm not really far away so my timer is running to get my stuff back and you guys know how badly I want my stuff back. Um, um, let's use, let's use gravel. Maybe to pillar down there. Hopefully this will work. We'll see here in a second. Oh man, I'm, I'm curious now. So I started working a little bit more. I Oh, hello, Skelly. I don't want you in here. Check this hole out. Ugh. Hole of darkness and death. Wow. Right a ravine right here. That's pretty crazy if you ask me. That doesn't work. Let's do this. I hope there's no... It doesn't look like there's lava down there right away. So I might have a chance. Oh man, what would I give for a jetpack right now? Is the gravel not stacking? Oh yeah, it is. Just really deep. Okay, let's do this. Torches, torches. Wow, this is the deepest ravine I ever s Oh, hey guy, get out of here. No one likes you. This is craziness. Look at this. Look how deep it is. Get out of here. There's some of my stuff. Wow, I never knew. Look at this stuff. Uh, okay, let's kill him. Let's kill this guy too. And then let's use our one last torch. Hello. To grab our stuff here, which is apparently all down here, luckily, but that is so crazy. I just don't know. Wow. 
Um, um, too much stuff on, too much stuff on me. Let's get rid of the guy. This and this we don't need, and we don't really need the rotten flesh, and we still don't need this. Okay. Wow. This is some crazy stuff that's going on. I have a few more torches now. Just a few. Let's see. Wow, this is the deepest ravine ever. All the way down here and I never knew about it. <laughs> and I just... I dug down one block and already I'm down here. Oh man, and I'm getting hunted. Let's see. Can I get up there somehow? Let's try this waterfall here. This is just craziness. I definitely have to light this place up. This is something I certainly didn't expect when I tried to to did some work and to do some work in my basement. But wow. That is sure one of the biggest ravine I have ever seen. And right below my laboratory. All right, let's see if I can find my hole. It should be up there somewhere. There's the gravel, so it's probably all the way on the other side. Um I should have enough stone on me to pillow somewhere over there, maybe. Let's do this. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! It's that is that is just so amazing. Maybe I'll find another spawner here, which would be awesome. Who knows? Maybe not. But this is certainly sick. <laughs> All right, almost up there again, and I can quickly talk about what I did so far. Yeah, that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to dig this out and replace it with these boys here. I don't need you right now. I wanted to put these in here so I can fill it with water. Um, but nope, that's apparently not gonna happen. So I looked up what the most efficient um, pattern is for a sugarcane farm. But I didn't really like it and it didn't really fit in here. So what I'm probably going to do is having just water all the way um, next to the path on all four quadrants. And then have maybe a small little bridge, just one slab to go over into the quadrant. And then this is probably the pattern. We're just the most efficient with what I can do after having this, this stream here. I think it's kind of interesting looking. It's fine. Not too bad. Um, doesn't need to be perfect. I just need... I don't need that many sugarcane. Oh man, this is crazy. Now you see how I fell down there. Never... Never dig directly below you. Rule number one in Minecraft. You all know it. Alright, um... I guess now that I know about the ravine, I'll be a lot more careful here. But nonetheless, I still have a lot of work to do. And that's what I'm gonna do... Right now. All right, we're on kind of long again, so I just want to quickly grab some of the stuff we want to plant down there. We want to lay it down. That should be enough sugar cane. Um, let's take just very few cactuses because I'm not too sure how I'm going to do the cactuses yet. I have one single potato that I'm going to plant down and that will hopefully grow big. And um, by the way, do I, do I have any... I don't think I do. Oh, I do. I do have melon seeds, so I'm gonna leave one of those behind just in case the creeper surprises me. Sneaky bastards. Um, so we will have one one backup melon seed. But look at this, guys. So first question I have for you: Should I put that half uh, half a uh, yeah a slab in the ground, or should I have it up here, like on the other side? I'm not sure what looks better. Hmm. Let me know what you think about it, and then I'll show you my design. So I changed, I changed all the sugarcane stuff to sand, just to have it kind of similar to the, to the cactuses over there. So we have in the back the two, the two that need sand, and in the front the two that need dirt. I already um, crafted a hoe and and what is the word for hoeing things? There has to be a word. Anyways, I made everything ready for the potato, I can grow here now. And this is really, really weird. I accidentally placed the water source on the stair and flew down there. I took it away immediately, but I still have this, this little water slab here, <laughs> which is kind of weird. I don't know if it will go away someday, but for now we'll keep it. Um, I'll have um, melons in the center, just like, yeah, let's do it here, just like that. And it helps to have Spaces to the left and to the right that makes it um, double as fast the melon growth. 
So that is interesting. Um, I could even make one melons for one pumpkins. I'm not too sure about that yet. The only thing I'm not too sure about is the cactuses. Um, this is the pattern that I came up to fit the most cactuses in here. I somehow want to auto automate it a little bit. So whenever cactuses grow, I want the, uh, I want the cactus parts to drop down and maybe get funneled into a hopper down here maybe in the center. But I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that yet. I have to experiment around with it and um, I might do it only with hoppers so not even use water back here. That would require me to get a lot more iron though. You guys know I wasted all my iron last episode on the enclosure for the Pachycephalosauruses. So I'll need some more iron before I can craft all these hoppers that would be needed to do this. But other than that, the wall design still needs to be done, the ceiling design still needs to be done, but it is uh, functional. We have a nice little plantation down here now. And yeah, I think we should end this episode here. And you guys should make sure to leave me your suggestions in the comments. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you all in the next episode again. Until then, have a nice day. And seriously guys, don't be daft. Play some Minecraft. <laughs>